Welcome to About the Winelands. In this show, we'll be chatting to leaders, influencers, wine producers, restaurants, winelands businesses, and other role players. Tune in every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday for our latest episodes. You will find us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram TV, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, and Spotify. Before we start today's show, I just want to take the opportunity to say thank you to our sponsor of the show, Lisa Loves Wines. Lisa shared with me that she has a very special offer for our listeners today. I'm not sure if your listeners are aware, but Magnum sized bottles are becoming very fashionable in Europe, and I think South Africa will follow suit shortly. So, as part of her biggest beautiful campaign, Lisa will be offering a discount on 1.5 litre Magnums. This is also a great Father's Day gift or a birthday gift. We will leave the details and links on how to get this awesome offer inside the description. Now, on with today's show. Good day, everyone, and welcome back to About the Winelands. Today, I'm talking to Edo Haynes. Edo is at Love Near Wine Estate. Um, welcome to About the Winelands, Edo. Thank you very much, Will. It's a pleasure to be with you. It's our pleasure to have you. So tell our listeners a bit um, about yourself and um, what you're doing at Lavenir and um, how you got involved in the wine industry. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, so I studied winemaking and I'm a qualified wine winemaker. I made um, wine in Constantia for a while before I decided to sort of spread my proverbial wings in the wine industry um, by becoming a wine writer. I was a wine writer for Wineland magazine for 10 years and eventually became editor of the publication. And part of my job at Wineland and Vimpro was to engage with the next generation of winemakers. And part of this was to every year take some of the young wine leaders on an overseas trip to a leading wine um, region. Um, in terms of, or, or in order to get winemakers to engage with other industry leaders, to learn about um, the international trade, to perhaps see some winemaking techniques and to basically come back inspired. And um, it's now four years ago, we went to the Loire Valley. It was a trip where myself and um, Charles Williams from the Touren, Ati Lowe from Opstal, and Dirk Utsia, the, the winemaker at Lavanier, went to the Loire Valley. And um, when I asked Ed Vini if Dirk can be part of this trip, they said, yes, no problem, that's perfect. Um, but in order, to, in, in order for Dirk to go to the Loire Valley, they asked me to present a tasting in Paris for, um, for the Ed Vini commercial team. And it, I did the tasting and it went well, and I was so intrigued by this dynamic organization um, with a really inspiring and young commercial team at the helm. And um, when I came back to South Africa, I realized that um, it sort of sparked an interest in me to um, sort of delve into the commercial side of the wine industry. And that, that's when I made the switch from being a wine writer to getting into the commercial side of the wine industry and the marketing side of the wine industry. So today I've been at Lavinia for three years and it's been an absolutely wonderful journey. Wow, that's amazing. So um, can you tell us a little bit of the history of um, Lavinia itself? Of course. So um, before 1990, when the estate was acquired by Mark Veer, and its name was changed to Lavenir. Lavenir was part of a bigger wine, wine estate or wine farm, essentially, called Veltefrieden. And when Marc Veer bought the estate in 1990, he, he's a Frenchman um, or a French-speaking Mauritian. And he came to this estate that he fell in love with, but he couldn't pronounce the name. So he said that this estate is his future, and he called it Lavenir, which means the future in French. And that's when Veltefrieder got changed to, um, to Lavenir. 
So Valtafira was one of the, is one of the oldest wine estates in Stellenbosch, um, but it never made wine under its own label. And it's only since Mark Veer bought the estate that wine was produced under the name Lavinia. And that started in 1992. And um, the rest is history. It, it immediately gained traction in terms of the Pinotage. Back then, winemaker um, François Nadia really made a name for himself as the Pope of Pinotage in Stellenbosch. And um, we were fortunate today that the current winemaker, Dirk Kutsia, was mentored by, 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 by French Renadier and has maintained that level of quality, level of innovation, and absolute passion for Pinotage. Wow, that's interesting. Um, besides Pinotage, you also have a famous Chenin Blanc block. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, so um, Lavinia focuses on Pinotage and Chenin Blanc which are quintessentially the varietals that South Africa are known for. And um, in terms of the Chenin Blanc, it's a registered certified heritage vineyard and um, part of the old vine project. As you enter La Vineyard Estate, there is an amazing vineyard that is 48 years old today. Um, <clears throat> that we call the old lady. It's a, she's, an, she's a Chenin Blanc vineyard. She produces the most amazing grapes. And um, they have now, um, what's the word? They've now isolated the gene genetic plant material of this, of this vineyard in order to propagate um, the clone and eventually make it available in five years time in 2025 so that this same clone can be replanted. And we're very, very excited about that. And the old lady's a legend on the estate. She produces the most delicious Shenans. Um, we make a Shenan that is, that is a really classic style. Um, she's harvested in two different portions, one which is harvested earlier and one which is harvested later in order to get that balance and finesse that we want in our Shenans. Um, in terms of South African Shenans development, I think the, the industry has matured and developed in terms of the, the style of Shannon that is producing. We're producing Shannons now that are that, that showcase finesse, that showcase complexity, and that really age well. And these dimensions are the dimensions that Dirk works on in terms of our single block Shannon um, to produce a wine that is absolutely world class. One of the um, awards that we're very proud of of the single block Shannon is this wine won the Diamond Trophy at the Sakura Wine Awards in Japan, which essentially, essentially means that it's the top Chenin Blanc from South Africa in Japan. And for us, that's a huge compliment. We know that the Japanese wine market is a very sophisticated one, and that Japanese in, in general love delicacy and sort of, um, they like the finer things in life, and they, they, they're very sophisticated in the way that they um, appreciate wine. And for our Shannon to be rated as the top Shannon in such a market is an absolute um, wonderful accolade for us. Oh, that's a wonderful story. Can I go back to what you said about the Loire Valley, which is interesting because, you know, um, if, you, if, you, if you, France is more known for um, Bordeaux and Burgundy and, you know, the Champagne areas. And the Loire Valley is, is really known for its chateaus and being the bread basket of of France. So you personally, you know, you, when you and Dirk were there, what did, what did you actually, what, what did you uh, take away from the Loire Valley that you brought back to South Africa? Well, it's an absolutely fascinating region. Um, um, what we took home, I'll, I'll sort of split it up into different categories. The first part is they've got a really progressive approach towards biodynamic wine production. And I think that's uh, one, something that South Africa can, can bring back home and ask ourselves why such a very small percentage of South African vineyards are organic or biodynamic. While a region like the Loire Valley has certain appellations within it um, that are completely biodynamic. And um, that's certainly one thing that we, that we brought home. And at Lavinia, we are we're working closely with um, experts in terms of organic production and seeing what, how we can make this estate sustainable, how we can pra um, practice organic practices at the estate, 
and how we can essentially live up to the name of the future in order to keep our soils healthy, keep our vines healthy, and um, produce wines that are natural and um, hopefully one day organic or biodynamic. So Loire Valley is very, very different to South Africa. I think in South Africa, we've got ample sunlight. We know that our grapes are going to ripen. And our challenge is to pick Chenin Blanc at the right, um, at the right ripeness level. Well, in the Loire Valley, you don't necessarily reach those ripeness levels because their um, climate is different. They've got rain, they've got, um, they've got limits in terms of ripening their grapes. And they've also got very, very different styles. In the Loire Valley, they produce a lot of sparkling Chenin Blanc, which is still a very small category in South Africa, but they also produce lots of sweet wines and semi-sweet wines, while South African Chenins are mostly dry. Um, it's a fascinating region. If there's, if, if there's one region where we can learn from and they can learn from us in terms of a different approach, diversities of style, it's the Loire Valley. And you see that with the Chenin Blanc Association, how they are closely working with Loire producers and finding mutual benefits in terms of raising the profile of Chenin. And then the other variety that the Loire Valley is known for is very close to my heart. It's Cabernet Franc. And I think that the variety also has a very big future in South Africa and globally. Well, interesting. You know, the fact that you, know, that you, that you mentioned also biodiversity and organic wine um, growing, I think, um, um, and this is something I want to ask you, because the name is apt, you know, the future. And the future of wine is in the end of millennials. And, um, you know, it's a different market. So do you think, you know, what is your take on that? Um, did, are, are these things important to the millennial market? Yeah, um, I think even the current situation that we're in is very, it's a very interesting learning opportunity for the wine industry. And um, the way that wine is being sold is changing at a rapid pace. And the way that it is being presented is changing. Um, we, we often use the phrase at Love and Near that authenticity is the new luxury. And millennials love authenticity in terms of stories. Um, the story behind a vineyard. I told the story of the old lady with the Chenin Blanc vineyard earlier. That's more interesting that bottle with the, with the curious price tag. Um, the, luxury, the luxury approach to wine is changing with millennials. And it's, it's all about authenticity. It's about telling the story. It's about being true to who you are and what you're trying to present. And there are, a lot, there are values, at, um, values at play. Um, there are associations at play. And most importantly, as I mentioned, characters and stories that become more and more important to the millennial market. Um, and you have to be open and accessible and um, be able to listen and be able to respond to this market, which makes it very interesting, but we also see it as a massive opportunity. Um, in terms of our demographics that we sell to, there is a, there is a large proportion of people that really appreciate Lavinia wines that are from this millennial grouping. And it's important to engage with them and understand what they want. And that's something that we actively do, not only in the Citadel and um, when it was still operating, but also in the trade and um, wherever possible. Um, it's also, Lavinia is a pioneer of premium Provence style rosés in South Africa. And if you look at wine festivals and especially millennials in South Africa, rosé is a growing category. And if it's something that you're known for, like in Lavinia's case, um, you have an advantage. And um, if you look at our Glen Rosé, which is a high-end rosé, it's limited, it's from a single vineyard, and it has a wonderful story and unique packaging. And it's a one that is being, that um, when, it was, when it was started in 2015, it was strange. Why would you do a uh, um, why would you do a high end rosé? I mean, rosé is rosé. At that stage, most of it was still sweet, but now the Glen Rosé gets sold out in a couple of months every year. Most of it is sold from the farm, and it has a really fantastic following. And it's that kind of engagement that we want, and um, 
that we that we see as an advantage in terms of the millennial market. That's awesome. I mean, you you um, mentioned authenticity, and um, you know, what, in terms of um, any other um, uh, things you can highlight about Lavenese and uh, Dopitzia's wine philosophy and winemaking philosophy. So Dirk's main passion in life is most certainly Pinot Fruitage. He loves this varietal um, and he loves it for different reasons. One of the things that he really tries to showcase, is, to showcase at Lavenier is Pinotage's versatility. If you think Pinotage, you immediately think of a dry, full-bodied, big red wine. Well, Dirk's approach is that it can be showcased as a premium rosé. It can be shown as an unwooded, um, as an unwooded red. It can be shown as a more feminine style, like the Provenance Shell, but it can also be a big and full wine that is well structured and can keep for years and decades, like the single block Pinotage. So Dirk's big passion is to showcase the versatility of this varietal and to show it in new ways, to show that um, the way that Pinotage is being approached is new. We're planting it on new sites. Lovin here, we've got trellised vines, we've got bush vines, um, we've got different angles, we've got different slopes, and we're trying to bring that diversity and to showcase the versatility of this variety. And um, Dirk grew up in Hookville, which is very close to the Neisner Forest. He um, loves nature, and we spoke about organic and, su and sustainable production of wine. That's also something that lies very close to Dirk's heart, and is definitely part of his philosophy in terms of Lavinia. We also have a Pebbles after-school care facility at, at the estate, um, in terms of the future of the next generation of people that live on the estate, where we give children the opportunity to um, achieve academically, but also achieve in, achieve in other spheres of life. We've started the Lavinia Sports Development Academy, where um, the kids at the Pebbles After School Care Facility also benefit from professional coaching. To get that bit of inspiration, to, to get exposure to sport, and to learn some of the fundamental aspects of sport, like teamwork, and um, pushing through, and sort of being able to, to, to decide your own destiny through sport as well. So um, the, the, the aspect of Lavinia is multifaceted with Lavinia. We look at the future of not only the environment and not only the economic sustainability of the wine industry and Lavinia itself, but also the people at the estate and also the neighboring estates around Lavinia. Oh, that's awesome. So talking about, you know, the surroundings and um, other things on the farm, what else do you offer visitors? Um, you have accommodation there and then what else? So our, ex <laughs> our, our hospitality offering is something where this focus on authenticity only ca also comes into its own right. Mm -hmm. um, we really have a fantastic Celador experience where people are given a Chenin Blanc and Pinotage experience that are second to none. We have all the vintages that are available. We've got a cheese and wine pairing. We've got charcuterie and wine pairing. We've got very, very authentic um, cheese and charcuterie platters at the estate. And um, then we also have the added benefits of um, French wines from the Advini group that are available from the estate. Um, obviously during the Corona lockdown, this isn't possible. Um, but it is part of the, it's, it's a big part of Lavinia's soul and, and the way that we operate. We love welcoming people at the estate. And we certainly can't wait that we, for, the, for the opportunity that we can do that again. Well, I've learned, Alyssa, I've heard that you guys have the best live music or the best music at your tasting and sales facility. What, do, what is the story there? Is this live? Is this just, you have a good DJ? How, how, how did you get that <laughs> reputation? <laughs> I think it's a I think it's a bit of a combination. Wine is about senses, and uh, you have to have the right music. And our Celador, our Celador and experience manager, Ryan Bread and Cup, um, feels very strongly about the music that is played at Lavinia. 
but also occasionally we have live gigs where we have a variety of music on offer um, and the focus is always on the wine of the estate but if you have a, if you have the ambiance and the background music and just the entire experience of this beautiful tranquil setting and um, the wine also comes to its own well, that sounds awesome now you know you mentioned the coronavirus and our, our current situation so you know this this has forced all of us to rethink our business models so um do you guys have any changes in mind or new ideas one of the things that is clear from um, all the research that is being done in terms of the commercial commercial aspect of um, coronavirus is that your brand equity will show in terms of how quickly the brand recovers after the coronavirus. And I think in that sense, Lavinia has done very, very well. Um, we've done well in terms of the, the direct sales. And now that the market has, has started to open up again, um, we've been absolutely humbled by the requests and orders that we've received and support from and support from loyal supporters of Lavinia in general um, globally. And this has been absolutely wonderful to see that we were able to pull it through and um, still maintain good rates of sales through this loyalty for the brand that was built up um, over the past 30 years. So um, things like uh, social media and, and that type of stuff, how, how important is that do you think that's going to be for the future of the wine industry? Well, I've constantly mentioned engaging with your consumer and mm -hmm. understanding your consumer, but also sharing your heart and soul with the consumer. That aspect of authenticity is incredibly important. And that also reflects in um, our social media approach. Um, we regularly give Dirk an opportunity to show what he's doing in the vineyard and um, to give the people of we, we give the people of Lavinia a voice through social media and we get a glimpse a glimpse um, into the life of people at Lavinia, the production side as well as in the market. And also support our um, colleagues in the industry. And um, during this lockdown restaurants and hotels that supported Lavinia over the decades and were closed. And as soon as we were able to support these restaurants again, we absolutely preferred that by ordering them their food, enjoying them safely at Lavinia Estate, and pairing them with our wine as a team from Lavinia. So it's about relationships. It's about um, engaging with your customer. It's about authenticity. And it's about being true to your philosophy and being true to what you represent as a brand and as a winery. Well, you've summed it up nicely, which almost makes my next question um, mute, but I'll ask it anyway. What is the most important thing you've learned from your wine journey? We're an industry that is social. We're an industry that engages. We're an industry that sells a product that people enjoy. And enjoyment is so important. As, as long as you enjoy engaging with wine and engaging with people, um, the successes will follow because people feel that positivity, people feel that energy, and they associate with that. And if you've got a passion for quality, you live your philosophy in terms of what you want to achieve with your wines, then you will be successful. And I've mentioned it a lot during this whole discussion, but um, if, there's, if there's one wine quote that really um, rings true in the approach that we have at Lavinia, it is that authenticity is a luxury. You need to be true, you need to, um, you need to have a product that cannot be replicated, and that's where authenticity of something like a single, single vineyard range comes into play. And you need to be pioneering, um, push the boundaries, showcase that versatility of Pinotage in Lavinia's case, um, be a pioneer of premium Pinotage Rosé, why not? And um, we've got a few other very, very exciting projects in the, in the cellar at the moment. Um, never stop dreaming. Um, push that envelope and um, make the ability to reinvent yourself um, part of how you continually achieve success. That is part of sustainability, essentially. That's awesome. So I've heard Lisa from Lisa Loves Wines whispered in my ear 
that you guys are doing a, a biggest beautiful campaign um, on your MCC and Pinotage Magnum bottles. So can you tell us a little bit more about these wines? Yeah, well, um, <laughs> I'm a massive fan of Magnums. I think um, the, the, the way that wines mature in Magnums is just incredible. And um, we've seen a, a gradual growth in the interest in Magnums. And um, especially on special occasions, Father Day is, Father's Day is coming up. And when restaurants were still operating during Father's Day, we had a special where wines by the glass in terms of our provenance Pinotage was poured out of, out of the Magnum. And it just feels different. It feels grand. It feels impressive. And um, with that, with the mature, um, the different way that wine mature in Magnum, I think it's just an awesome way to sell wine and the category that is growing. And we're very, very glad to be part of this um, initiative to showcase Magnums. That's awesome. I hear that it's a big growing trend in Europe as well um, to, to um, you know, to take Magnums to parties and, you know, mag the Magnum sales there is becoming, is becoming very fashionable. Yeah, not, not, only, not only in consumption at home, but also at restaurants. Um, Magnums are different. As I said earlier, they're grand, they're impressive, and um, it immediately makes a big impression if you're serving the wine out of a big, out of a big bottle. And in a way, um, it's also something that's associated with parties and celebrations. So what you're telling me is it's also going to make great Instagram shots. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, so, you know, if people want to get hold of you, how do they get hold of you guys? Well, you mentioned it. Um, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Mm -hmm. And um, if, if they want to contact us directly, um, it's, it's easy to to email Ryan and you can email him at info at lavanier.co.za. Oh, that's awesome. We'll put all the links down in the description. And then um, all that's left for me is to tell you to, um, you know, to keep your head up while the lockdown is going on. And thank you very much for spending the time with us. And it seems like you guys have your finger on the pulse of the future. Thank you very much. Thanks for the opportunity. And cheers to the future of South African wine. Thank you for listening to today's show. Just a quick reminder that you can get that 1.5 liter Magnum discount. So hurry, get in touch with Lisa. She's at Lisa Loves Wines, and we have the link in the description. Yeah.